Yo, when it comes to options, honestly, more is more. That's why I love HelloFresh. That's why HelloFresh's menu includes 40 recipes and over 100 add-on items to choose from every week. When you get HelloFresh, you know you're getting top-notch produce since it travels from the farm to your door in less than seven days. I got a baby. I got another baby. I got a wife. She's tired. She's breastfeeding all day. We don't have time to be going to the grocery store, looking up recipes, cooking, cleaning, putting away pots, doing all the menu, doing all the recipe, all that. We don't have time. That's why HelloFresh makes it so much easier, okay? We love it and it's delicious, okay? So go to HelloFresh.com slash 50dudes and use code 50dudes for 50% off plus 15% off the next two months. One more time, go to HelloFresh.com slash 50dudes and use code 50dudes for 50% off plus 15% off the next two months. America's number one meal kit. It's lit. Here's the thing, this is the issue. You listen to all these health obsessed folks, but when was the last time you went to an actually good doctor? If you have to think about it, it's time to head to ZocDoc. There are thousands of top rated doctors on ZocDoc. They're all listed with verified patient reviews so you can find and book a doctor who not only has years of experience and an actual medical degree, but also gets you. The ZocDoc app is free, my friends, where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. Go to ZocDoc.com slash foods and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C.com slash foods. ZocDoc.com slash foods. Dudes. Behind the foods. Yo, it's the dudes. Behind the foods. Dudes. Shabbat Shalom. What's up, y'all? What the fuck? <laughs> this guy, I haven't seen this guy in two weeks, and suddenly he's a Jewish man. It's been like a month. Has it been a month? Yeah, dog. Well, Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> Uh, we were watching this new Adam Sandler movie and like <laughs> it's all about bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs. Bat mitzvah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, I was um, you know, our nanny was in Greece for like two and a half weeks. So I remember that, and that's why I was like, okay, we can't shoot. And then she his parents came into town, so we we're just hanging out. And then like, so it was basically like a month. You know, we haven't seen each other. Oh, so. that's why we were shooting so much. Yeah, to 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 bank some episodes. Oh my goodness gracious, dude! Just been out here, just having living the life, huh? <laughs> living to <Catching> COVID, <laughs> dude. Well, it it was <laughs> fucked up, right? Because. So, you know, Chia's parents came for a couple weeks, but like, and you know, like I've said before, you know, Chia's dad and Veda are like besties, right? And where, I don't know if I've said this before, but I feel like they're so close. I feel like they were married in a past life. You know what I'm Mm -hmm. saying? I think their souls are just connected, Mm -hmm. right? And so he get he comes to America and he be hyped to hang out with this little Veda, but Veda at like literally okay so they landed she saw him ran to him they hugged, and then that, wow like that she remembers oh yeah dude it's and well they Facetime every night too Chia Facetimes her parents she says look hey look Veda it's Tata she goes Tata, and then so we didn't tell her that he was coming and then so she came upstairs from her nap. And no, I, I carried her up, and her dad and her mom were upstairs. And Veda, I was like, look who it is. And she just, like, looked and, like, smiled. I put her down, and she just ran to him, hugged him. Um, and they were just chilling, like two peas in a pod, right? But later that day, Veda started being, like, she got a crazy fever. She kept saying her tummy hurt. Um, and then, like, The whole, and then I put her down to like pee, and you know when you're like body, like when you get the aches and chills from everything hurts. Yeah, so she like I saw her walking on the tile of the bathroom. She was like, like her face was like wincing, and I'm like, oh body aches. Yeah, I'm like, does she have body aches for the first time in her life, in her little two year old life? She's like, and we're potty training right now, you know. So she's like, she has her feet on the on the bathroom tile, and she's like. And then she got up to pee. She touched the bathroom. She's like, that's too cold. Oh, she doesn't know what's going she on. She has no she's just idea. Like, her sensories are just all off. Yeah, dude. So fucking mm-hmm. sad. So, and then the next she's day. superpowers. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, I can sense everything. <laughs> <laughs> the next day she woke up. Literally, dog, when I say from like the beginning of the day towards the end, of, crying all day. Like literally all day. 
all day, like just from the pain, just from on discomfort and pain and like whatever the fuck she was feeling. And so, you know, Chia's dad, you know, he's like, oh man, he just wanted to play with Veda. But for some reason, Veda was so clingy towards me when she had COVID. So, um, I can't get grandpa sick. <laughs> yeah, but, you yeah. okay? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. This is for your own good, Tata. <laughs> so, but she, yeah, she, I didn't even think of that. So, Tata's like, You want me to hold you, Veda? And she's like, No, daddy. He hugs me. And then I'm like, and You would like this too? Right. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and, and fuck in my, you, dude, in my head, I'm like, Damn, this sucks. My poor baby. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> See how it feels. <laughs> but, <laughs> what do you think of that Canada boy? Mm. Yeah, ta 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 ta. <laughs> so sure enough, we took her to urgent care. They tested her. I got I got some of the fucking saddest video footage, bro, of just her like, because mind you, she's been crying all day. She has huge bags under her eyes. She's crying. She said her tummy hurts. And apparently, this new wave of COVID that's been going around for kids, especially, it's been making them like di- have diarrhea. Oh, because the first wave didn't do shit to them. Exactly. So this this one adapted for babies. I guess so, dude. Oh, uh, yeah, in so, your faces. <laughs> you your little stupid, adorable yeah. faces. How you like it now, huh? Idiots. Yeah, little idiots. <laughs> so, so they tested her. And they were kind of hoping it was COVID because they were like, if she has something wrong with her stomach and we don't know what it is, you might have to go to the emergency room. Oh, with COVID, they're like, we know what to do. Yeah. So they were like, okay, well, I guess good news, bad news. She has COVID. As soon as we went back to the house, fucking diarrhea and, you know, gave her a little Tylenol. She had her diarrhea. Now that we knew what it was, we felt a little better. But then like she had maybe like another day of feeling a little funny, but then she was solid. You know, like two and a half days of feeling like shit. And then she was like back to normal, bouncing around and shit. Um, of course, everybody in the house got it because we're oh, all like trying to take care of her, holding her, hugging her. And like there was one point where Veda's literally just breathing in my face. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. this is before I even knew she had COVID. I'm like, whatever she got, I got. But so then Chia got it. I got it. Uh, her pops eventually got it. And then, um, Q also, Chia, like, Q had, like, a little runny nose one day. Chia just kind of tested his snot. It also of came course. up positive. So the whole fucking house had it for a... Uh, How was Q, though? He was fine. He was chilling. Had a little runny nose. Was a little sneezy, but he was his regular self. Um, strong-ass boy. I told you that boy's strong as fuck. He's had big-ass head I gave him, bro. <laughs> his head is the size of my head. Nah, his... We have the same size head right now. <laughs> it's like... There's too much space in the COVID can't find his way. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, where is... He's Where like, is the surface? He's like, I think I have a headache, but it's just right here. It's in, it's in this little fraction of my head, Dad. It can't go anywhere else. There's too much fucking surface area. Yeah, so unfortunately for a part of their stay, they had COVID, but, um, you know, everyone's fine now. And uh, After, after she was feeling better, was she going back to Tata? Yeah, then her and Tata had a good old time, which was actually, you know, now that, I, that I've accepted that— Good break, dude. That, yeah, Veda's going to hurt my feelings sometimes. I'm like, uh— Okay, you don't wanna, you 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 don't hang up, Daddy. That's cool. I get on my laptop. I get work done. It's actually better that way. At least <laughs> she's like not having to go to Grandpa and get tired and run to you. Yeah, it's like Grandpa can just hold down the fort the whole time. Yeah, man. And look, and as like, I know it sounds like, you know, it's petty, but the fact that she was dissing Grandpa for me for a little while because she like w- only really wanted to cling to me for like a whole day made me feel like. Okay, she does love me. <laughs> See, even when grandpa's around. This is what it is, though. Kids know in their hearts of hearts who's fun fun and then who's the one that holds down the fort. Yeah. Because even dogs are like that. Like when uh, when I left, whenever I leave, like the dog never cries for me. Right. Mm. But when I'm in the house, the dog is only next to me, wants to sleep next mm. to me. When Mario leaves, fucking howling. <laughs> like, where the fuck are you? <laughs> right. But in the house, when I'm there, the dog doesn't give a fuck about mm-hmm. her at all. So the... People are very, people and animals are very instinctual. They, I agree. You know. um, someone pointed out to me one time in a vlog, speaking of dogs, because, you know, Veda, of course, is usually, is usually <laughs> very clingy to her mom. But then in one vlog, um, a big dog came running in the house and Veda went from her mom to me. Mm-hmm. So it's like, even though she's usually very clingy to her mom, when she felt scared, she went to her daddy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They know. They know. They know who got the fucking hands they in the know, house. No, <laughs> Ooh, dude, I swear. Oh, oh, dog. I'll sock a dog in his face, dude. How, how, how long was uh, your, your grandparents here for? 
Um, they were here for like a- Well, not grandparents. It was Vader's grandparents. Like a, like a couple weeks. Oh, so they helped out a lot there. Yeah, so they had their time, you know, to get over the COVID, and then they were able to hang out while me and Chia could go to the movies and- Go to Beyonce and you know and go hang out and stuff. You the know? Yon dog. So I was talking about this on my podcast, right? Mm -hmm. But I just and I'm probably gonna get flack on my podcast for sure because it's gonna come up before this. <laughs> I was trying to figure out the because there's this huge conversation about right now. It's who's bigger, Taylor Swift or Beyonce? <laughs> you know, and in mm -hmm. my mind, number one, I I know they're both iconic. Mm -hmm. But I'm not dying for either one of them, right? They don't mean that much to me. Right. I just know in terms of icons that are iconic. Yeah. I just didn't – I can't see the – I don't know what the trajectory of Taylor Swift's fame is, right? I know she had a lot of hits, but so has a lot of other people. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like trying to figure out what the fuck is it that she connects so hard with her fans. People die for that girl, dude. I, yeah, look. I, I, um, I'm a huge Beyonce fan. I'm also a Taylor Swift fan, okay? Um. I did not understand. I, I'm with you. I, I think. Look, I think Taylor Swift makes really good music. Um, you know, if you like that type of music, and um, and I get down on occasion. I've put on some Taylor Swift, just chilled out. You know what I'm saying? Had a little pumpkin spice latte and did some knitting. <laughs> um, oh, Taylor Swift. <laughs> but. Uh, and I also think she's just, uh, I think she's just a lovely person when I see her dancing around all goofy at award shows. I think it's cute and endearing and shit, she's right? She's a giant, too. <laughs> yeah, she's Fucking very tall and lanky. Huge. And she's beautiful, right? Um, but there was a Grammys performance one time where it was just her and, like, it, she wasn't doing the super poppy shake it off shit. Maybe she started with that, but... The performance ended with like a very like bare bone, just instruments and her singing performance. And I was like, wow, she's dope. Mm. That was the first time I was like, wow, I really um, get why people love her shit so much. She writes and composes her own music. Yeah, sure. yeah. You know, so um, look, I, I wouldn't spend money on a Taylor Swift concert, but I get it. If that's your shit. Like Andrew Soltz was saying that her, con her, <laughs> I saw. His, her concert is better than Beyonce. <laughs> which I, I find hard. To, well, actually, I don't I can't judge because I've never seen a Taylor Swift concert. Mm -hmm. But then even for those both, I mean, for me personally, have y'all been before Kanye went crazy? Have y'all seen the graduate when he was doing the graduation album, his concerts better yeah. than that? That's crazy. Um, that's just wild. I look, I, I can't fairly say Oh, a Beyonce concert is better than Taylor Swift concert because I've never been to a Taylor Swift concert. Exactly. That's but what as an outsider looking in, you know, Beyonce concerts are crazy, yeah, dog. Like even seeing because I've seen them both on TV. Yeah. Right? I'm like, I don't know. Just from a visual standpoint, for people, from somebody who likes both of them, kind of like mm -hmm. I want to say equally, but not caring too much about them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Beyonce's look crazy, dog. It's uh, the Beyonce concert like beautiful. Yeah. Um, even like I, so I've. You know, Chia's a pretty diehard Beyonce fan, so we've gone to a few different iterations of Beyonce concerts. I think we went on On the Run with Jay-Z and Beyonce, uh, which was sick. Uh, we went to, I think we went on um, the, you know, uh, Come On Ladies, Get In Formation. We mm -hmm. went to that tour, um, and then we went on this last one, and um, and every show is like, you know, they go all out, bro. You know what I'm saying? Crazy costume changes, choreography's on point, huge set pieces, fireworks, all that shit. It's a production. You know what I'm saying? Dude, Blue Ivy looks like somebody deep fake Jay-Z's face onto a little girl. But but she also looks so much like Beyonce, too. A little too. bit, right? No, no, a lot of it really? now, dog. If you see baby pictures of Blue Ivy where she just looked like Jay-Z, compared to now, it's like you see the Beyonce coming mm. out. I, Blue Ivy, not gonna lie, it was probably maybe because I've seen Beyonce perform so many times now. Blue Ivy's probably my favorite part of the whole show. Man. Really? Yeah, it's just cool to see her up there and then seeing like Beyonce just looking all proud, just watching her little baby dance and shit. So I didn't even know this until I was looking up all the Taylor Swift Beyonce stuff. Mm -hmm. People were hating on that little girl, like Blue Ivy. Oh yeah, I'm, uh, what you mean like like currently? I'm not sure if it was currently, but it was it was an article way back, but it was like Twitter just going in on Blue Ivy talking about nepotism, mm. like she's not even a good dancer. Why would you put her up there? And, I, you know, in my mind, like I had to kind of assess that, right, where, you know, me, I don't have kids yet, mm. right? But if I worked to build this empire, mm. right, and I did this through my own hard work and blood, sweat and tears, 
You don't think I'm going to pass a little nepotism to of, my child? Of course. I'll pass a little bit to it. Mm-hmm. It's not like I'm building her career off of this stuff. Mm-hmm. But it, like I, I don't know if people would ever be – if, if they're, they've never been in that position to kind of know what it's like, mm-hmm. right? And so – yeah, it's like I want to perform with my baby. Yeah. You know, I don't think it's like the perspective of my child is the best in the world, the best dancer. They, right. She deserves to be up here with these professionals. No, right. it's like, no, nah, I, I don't know how long I'm going to be doing this shit. Mm-hmm. And I want to do this with my kid. Mm-hmm. I think that's what the vibe is. I, I completely agree. And even in terms of let's let's take it in the same realm. But something that got you shitted on even more. Have you ever seen that footage of um, North? Little North, Northwest mm-hmm. singing mm-hmm. Uh, at some Kanye concert. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. <laughs> right. <laughs> but so she's at this Kanye concert and she's like on stage and she's like, yeah, yeah, whatever she's doing. But she's like, a li- she's having fun. You feel mm-hmm. me? But I also, and Kim, Kim's like bawling. <laughs> My baby. But if we're talking about both shits where, People want to talk shit about Blue Ivy. For, they're saying, like, she's not a professional dancer or she's, you know, maybe not killing a choreography like they thought she would, whatever, whatever. Like, it's just proud parents being like, if my child wants to do this and put themselves out there, then who am I to, like, stifle that? You know yeah. what I'm saying? And especially in terms of Northwest, I think North is hilarious, first of all. Um, and I think she, <laughs> <Google> Gaga. <laughs> yeah, she wanted to get up there, do her shit, express herself, because she's actually a really artistic little kid. And um, her parents were proud of that. And I think, like, if and it just so happens your parents are fucking billionaires and you're doing it in front of the whole world. But, you know. Yeah, I think people's perspective is a little skewed. Like, I do get it. It's like, okay, I came here to see Beyonce. I'm not trying to watch this child dance (laughs) all off sync for (laughs) fucking five minutes. Right, right. Because I want to see the fucking queen. I get your perspective. Yeah. But I think the when they say, oh, she's not talented enough. Beyonce knows. She fucking knows. By the way, Blue kills that shit. First of all, there you go. Blue Ivy killed that shit. She probably got better since like the first video that came out. I think you so. know what I mean. Yes, she's 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 relaxed a little more. You know what I mean. So she's kind of getting into it. And yeah, if you say that she doesn't deserve that spot, a hundred percent she doesn't deserve it. Well, yeah, yeah, it's her mom. You know what I mean. Look at it at the perspective of I'm a parent and I just want to dance with my kid on stage mm-hmm. because I love my child and I want her to be a part of my legacy. Mm-hmm. Don't look at it as like she auditioned for the spot. Of course she fucking did it. Nobody's hiding that. Yeah. Are you? dumb and this is not like bro this is not like it's fucking martin scorsese casting his yeah, daughter she's just doing a dance number on top of like a small part of the concert it's literally like two songs that's <laughs> it dog you're good relax what am i eating what the fuck is this oh so this people so you have japanese people they have their bentos mm-hmm. korean people have toshirak toshirak yeah toshirak is just a bunch of random stuff mm-hmm. so yeah keep popping your korean fried chicken okay you have um i don't i forgot what this is called in korean oh only in japanese inari um Daikon and then chapche. Tight. What is what is this big one with the with the crab meat? Inari. Inari. Yeah. Inari. Okay. Fun. Sweet. Sweet tofu wrap with like imitation crab, or you can put whatever you want in it. Mmm. That's great. Mm-hmm. And Delicioso. This is, this is like cute stuff you could take to a picnic. You know, go eat somewhere with your lady. Mm-hmm. Enjoy it. Oh, and first of all, let me say, hey. Thank you for holding down the fort while I was sick. Robin Couch, you killed it. Great episode. The people loved you. People don't even know. I was really worried it was going to be an anticlimactic reveal. <laughs> oh, if you did terrible, I would have just told you stand up and show your ass. <laughs> and then it would have been great either way. In that case, Robin Couch, you were terrible. <laughs> <laughs> People in the comments um, were saying, I'm calling it right now. The cakes aren't real. <laughs> and I was like, you're just trying to coax me into showing you yeah, my ass. so funny. They're like, I bet you you don't have a butt. <laughs> yeah, they were just talking bullshit. Robin Couch don't have no ass. Mm-hmm. Like, as a podcast, if it got worse and worse, I'm like, all right, Robin, I need you to stand up and twirl. <laughs> so, <laughs> any indication that content that I am directly involved in creating is not going well is if you tell me to show my butt. <laughs> no, not true. Because um, <laughs> we we ask to see your butt all the time, and mm-hmm. our this content is great. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> on camera. That'd be so funny if you're on the podcast. You're like, yeah, when I was a kid, I had a lot of trauma. Robin, please just stand up and twirl. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody fucking cares about your trauma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're traumatized. Stand up, turn around. Yeah. That reminds me of, uh, I, I do this to Chia all the time because it cracks her up. The the people, and I don't even know where this comes from, but like, you know, in movies when uh, a couple is like talking and or they're on a date and the girl's like, you know, so my, my favorite food is sushi. And the guy goes, oh yeah, your favorite food is sushi. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah, sushi. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember, <laughs> like, I, uh, I always imagine a scenario where the girl's like, yeah, so then, you know, my dad died of cancer. Oh, yeah, cancer? <laughs> um, um, yeah. That's a very good sketch. <laughs> but you can't. You have two kids. Um, acting is different, David So, I'm talking about you doing your own sketch. Yeah, I can write a sketch from making out with somebody. It's acting, dog. Okay. <laughs> can you say something? The, the, the reoccurring theme or recurring theme in, on, on all of our podcasts is we always say we're going to do something and then we <laughs> never do it. Tim at the beginning of this year said, dude, every month, one sketch. Easy. Ugh. We've done one. <laughs> I know. I know. But. You didn't expect Q to come out so fast. I, I didn't expect. I forgot that first four months is a fucking like bitch, dog. Like I forgot, but exhausting. It's a lot, and but I tell you what, I tell you what, bro. Like, you know, when I was going through it, and I was tired, and she was tired, and she was like, just you know, she's not a, a nice person when she's tired. I, I just remember th- I told In general. her. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, babe, we're done. No more. No more kids. Yeah. For our sanity, for our relationship. Um, for my career, no more. And she's like, no, like, just wait until we sleep train Q and like he's on a schedule and we're back to normal. It's not Q, it's you! (laughs) You, It is you! (laughs) Pick a different letter of the alphabet, baby girl. (laughs) Not the Q, it's the U. It's the U! (laughs) You called me fat and ugly so many times today. But she was like, hey, look, Trust me, once we get everything back on schedule, it'll be fine again. And I said, you'll find out after this break. News Behind the Foods listeners, this podcast is brought to you by Hello Fresh. Kickstart a fresh fall routine with Hello Fresh. Hello Fresh handles all the meal planning and shopping to deliver everything you need to cook up a tasty meal right at home. They do the part and you get to take the credit. That is my style, my friends. I'm like Jason Chen on Instagram. When it comes to options, honestly, more is more. That's why Hello Fresh's menu includes 40 recipes and over 100 add on items to choose from every week, my my friends, when you get HelloFresh, you know you're getting top-notch produce since it travels from the farm to your door in less than seven days. I personally love HelloFresh. The meals that I've made from HelloFresh has been so dang delicious. And sometimes I want like restaurant style food, but I don't know how to cook it sometimes because there's just some recipes that your boy just doesn't know how to cook. And HelloFresh has some amazing meals that I could just cook right up. It is freaking awesome. So go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 dues and use code 50 dues for 50% off plus 15% off the next two months. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 dues and use code 50 dues for 50% off plus 15% off the next two months. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. So, um, yeah, so... We are, so Q is now officially sleep trained, where he sleeps wow. 12 hours. You know what I'm saying? That's actually pretty fucking quick, dude. Uh, yeah, he took to it so quick, like two or three days. He was he was good to go. I love that, baby. It's pretty sweet, man. Um, so now we put him down at around like 6-ish, 6.30-ish, and the boy knocks out to like 7. It's great. And she was right. She was right. Now that both children are sleep trained in bed by 7 and, and sleeping until 7. She's not a cunt bag anymore she is no longer a cunt bag uh (laughs) now uh we can go back to like you know watching shows at night um watching like a movie like we you know while her parents were here we went and we watched a couple movies and 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 it does feel like it's it's back to normal i actually started writing the script i'm on like page 20 (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so sick of it. I'm, dude, I, I didn't want to talk about it because I'm actually doing it, but it's going, baby boy. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't fucking, I don't fucking believe it. Especially since she is like, I'm like, she, you know, she wants a lot of kids. She wants more. I'm like, all right, maybe I'll give you another one then. But I'm like, look, give me fucking, I'm going to. 
before we have another one, I'm writing this script. She's like, you've been talking about writing a movie for years. You're never going to have a third one. I know. But I'm like, no, just give me some time to finish this script, and then maybe we'll put another baby in you, okay? So. Man, she really wants a big-ass family. Huh? I know. She does. She truly does. So, but I see how she looks at like the children, mm -hmm. and her whole face looks so happy. Mm -hmm. Like she's so happy being a mother. Mm -hmm. It's like what she was born to do. Mm -hmm. Like there is, like there's people who are career women who are so driven towards that. Mm -hmm. Imagine like the highest level of career woman put into motherhood. Right. That's that's what she is. Like you could see how happy she is mm -hmm. when she sees the children. When she comes out, she looks at Q like the most beautiful thing in the world. And I'm like, oh, this woman is literally made to be. A1 mother. And she's so good at it, mm -hmm. you know? Um, like, as far as um, organization and... like Disciplinarian. Just, yes, just shit I would never think of doing where I'm running around like, oh, uh, uh, she's like, yeah, uh, it's right there. Bottom shelf. Yes, I have that already. I packed that already. Her snacks are in the thing, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, everything's, like, ideal, you know what I'm saying? And I've said this before, like, everything that I thought was... Uh, mildly annoying about Chia is ideal for motherhood. You feel me? I feel like when I look at her and when she's like <clears throat> looking at the kids, because I know like some of my friends who, this is not a knock on them at all, mm -hmm. but you know, they had their personal wants and they had their children's wants and all this other stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes when they're around their kid, I see them like exhausted, like, oh, I've never seen her do that. She's just more like tired, but she's loving the process of it, of being like a mother. And I'm like, damn, you uh, you really love this shit. Oh, no, 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 no. Every, every night, <laughs> when, by the time we put Veda down, she's like, I'm done. And I'll, <laughs> I'll make a joke. And she's like, all right, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> Good night, Q, you stupid bitch. <laughs> but, no, but, but, she, but, you know, Veda has entered the uh, terrific twos, as the, the, the terrible twos, right? So she be throwing tantrums now, bro. And she's being a lot more difficult. She knows that she can push boundaries with us. And sometimes she, she gets so frustrated. She is just like, what did she say? She was, she was like, oh, I love her so much, but I just want to bash her face sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> You're so cute, but mommy's going to obliterate you. <laughs> so she's high energy too. So, you know, mm, mm, mm. That's what I wrote down to tell you about, dude. Veda flipped the fuck out on me the other day. Like how? Bruh. So, now mind you, she's throwing a couple tantrums, right? But nothing that wasn't manageable. You feel me? And when you see children throwing tantrums and you don't have kids yet, you think, man, get your kid under control. But when you're in it and they're two and they barely understand what's happening, there's like, there's nothing you can do in that situation. You can't communicate to them. Yeah, because they don't, they don't understand a lot of shit, right? So I took Veda to this park that we always go to. It's like kind of our little time. We run around the park, slides, swings. It's a good time. She loves that shit. So we were having a little mommy, da daddy, daughter time at this park. And um, she was for some reason was not, was being very greedy with these like little steps. And this little boy was trying to go up the steps with his mom. And I'm like, all right, Veda, come on, make, make room, make room. Look, he, he's trying to come up. She's like, no, my turn. I'm like, yeah, baby, but you, you, you had your turn. Just, you know, just move aside for, for the little boy. You gotta share, you gotta share. She was like, no, mine. I'm like, Veda, baby, we have to share, okay? Mm -hmm. And she would not move. So I'm like, Oh, she's she's defiant. Yeah. So she's getting there, right? So I'm like, Veda, baby, come on. So I just picked her up, moved her out of the way. She did not like that. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately, she was like, no, starts crying, but she was just crying. Mm -hmm. Crying, she sat down. <clears throat> I could tell she's pissed. Sat down on the like the little slide area, and she's crying. She's like, no. So I'm like, I sit down next to her. I'm, I'm trying to be calm, right? I'm like, Oh, got a little throat gurgle. I'm like, baby, look, sometimes you have to share. You can't just cry every time, you know, you blah, blah, blah. Like, look, mama, there's so many kids, blah, blah, blah. She fucking, she gets up, runs away from me. Oh. <laughs> she gets up, runs away from me, goes off the slide. So now she's crying 
walking away from me, back turned, walking on the grass, walking away from me, right? And I'm like following her. I'm not chasing her. I'm just slowly walking behind her. She goes up to like the gate. She's just kind of like doing this at the edge of the park. Oh the my park. God, dramatic yeah, as dra- fuck. So dramatic, dog. So look, I grab her arm. I grab, I'm like, baby girl, <laughs> runs away, <laughs> runs away. So then she goes to the other side of the gate, opens it up, dog. I swear to God, opens it up. She goes, daddy, out. Daddy, get out. I'm like, I'm not going to leave, Veda. I'm not going to get out yeah, of the park. You don't tell daddy what yeah, to do. Yeah, I was like, baby, look, listen to me. Listen to me. I close the gate. She goes, nah. she leaves the gate. Now she's running outside of the park towards the street. I'm like, all right. Oh, she's acting up, I'm dude. like, this, this, is, this is next level. This is enough. I'm not, we can't be calm daddy anymore, right? Yeah. I fucking snatch her ass up. Mm-hmm. Now she's screaming, crying, scratched me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I'm like, oh, stop. If you don't stop crying, we're going home. We're going home right now. We're going home right now. Okay. And so then she like collapses to the ground. She's crying. <laughs> so I fucking, and, and we're potty training right now. Mm. So I'm like trying to get her to pee in the car before we go on this drive back home. Um, Cause we have our little toilet in there, you know, I'm like, sit, pee. She's sitting there crying. on toilet. I'm like, if you don't pee, we're going to go home. She's pretending like she's pushing. Uh, I'm like, all right, man, let's go. Fucking put her in a car seat. She finally, (laughs) I put on some little cartoons on my phone for her to watch while I'm driving. I look over, dog, in my rear view, she does this. I see her smiling, watching the cartoon, giggling. (laughs) And then she goes, and it's like smiling, though, watching the cartoons. I'm like, you little, mm, (laughs) I'm going to bash your face. (laughs) <laughs> Where'd so, you learn that? Mommy. <laughs> I learned it from mommy. <laughs> so, so now, bro, like, and this, she's never, she hasn't done that to me since, you know, but, um, cause now that she's calmed down, she does understand that that was very, like, whack of her. <laughs> yeah. For lack of a better word. She's like, I'm acting corny as fuck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what kind of corny as shit is this, she's motherfucker? Like, Daddy. Who am I? <laughs> As she grabs the fence. <laughs> I'm so rory. I'm so rory. I didn't know I was capable of such heinous things. <laughs> Indict me like Trump. Oh my God. Take but me then, away. So, so now, so she, I had a little scratch on my nose. And she'll, you know, so she'll be like, that, she, she, Daddy has owie? I'm like, yeah. I'm yeah, like, it was you. And I'm like, who, who did it? She's like, Veda. I'm like, do you feel bad? Yes. I'm like, you sorry? Yes. I'm like, okay. And she felt all bad that day. She went somewhere with her mom, but she's like trying to be all nice to me. And she's Daddy, give high five to me. Give high five to me. I'm like, I don't want to. <sighs> but. <laughs> all right, get out of here. <laughs> but she's also the shit. I love her so much. <laughs> it's so hard though, man. Like, you know what the fight the Mary I got into? Like a goofy ass argument. It wasn't like a real argument. Yeah. We haven't fought in a while, but. She keeps watching these like television shows about how to be a good parent. Mm. And I'm trying to explain to her, like, you could watch that for instances, right? But you're not having a sit down talk with these therapists. Mm -hmm. So you're not getting a full picture. Like they're giving you little glimpses within a 20 minute span. So don't take this advice for heart. So for example, she goes, you know, when we have a kid and we argue, we should argue like this. And I'm like, why are you telling us how to be a parent when we don't have a kid yet? (laughs) I was like, you, this is totally like my biggest concern for you is that you think everything's a puzzle piece that has to fit exactly. Mm. And there are people who will do everything perfectly exactly and their kids always end up in jail. <laughs> like you just, you just, <laughs> you don't know. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like take these little examples and then kind of put it in the bag for a mm-hmm. little bit, right? And then we should probably learn from parents that we like that are doing what they're doing and see what they did and try it out, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And then we'll all just feel like my mom, nobody thought that she would have kids, mm. right? She was this tomboy, troublemaker, whatever. And somehow my mom figured out how to raise two kids, right? So I'm like, if this piece of shit could do it, you could do it. You're perfectly <laughs> fucking fine. Right. And I think like for her, sometimes she gets, she's like so concerned about these things that haven't happened yet. Mm. You know what I mean? But like in that situation too, you never dealt with that shit. No. But you figured it out. It was tough, man. It was tough. Like I'm not going to lie. bash your little face. That shit, that shit deeply disturbed me from like, I was like, fuck, man. I just felt, you know, it's like. You just don't know what to do in that situation, you know. Just take it, them home. It just take them home, and it was it was hard, you know. It was like it's just, it's so frustrating because, um, you know, I don't, you know, me and Chia aren't, aren't like, you know, we 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 don't plan on ever doing any type of like 
physical discipline. You feel me? Um, aside from like, I don't know, I might just like give her a titty twister once. <laughs> purple nurple her ass, you, you know what I'm saying? Motherfucker. <laughs> but it's tough, you know, um, to, to it's no matter how, how much you think like, oh, nah, man, my baby girl is hilarious. She's the best, right? Mm -hmm. It's still like they, you know, they're still truly trying to navigate. And that's the shit too, right? You have to remember these kids are, they're feeling so much that they, they don't know how to express themselves and like, one, one of the things I had to tell my mom not to do is mm -hmm. like, I don't have kids yet, but we have like, you know, nephews or whatever, whatnot. Yeah. Korean people like to do this a lot where if the kid is upset at somebody, they'll play fight, they'll grab their hand and they go, like, get you. And then like tell the kid to hit somebody. Mm -hmm. And I tell my mom to not do that. Mm -hmm. She goes, why? It's just fun. I was like, no, no, no. It's not fun because I learned that way too, that when I was upset, I was allowed to hit somebody. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it starts from this type of shit. Mm -hmm. I was like, you think it's cute, but you can't do that. This is what they're learning. And literally that day, that kid when it started swinging at people. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, instantly, immediately. I was like, look, look at this shit. Yeah. And my mom was like, oh. I'm like, yeah, fool. <laughs> like, why do you think I got so many fights as a kid? Like, what right. are you fucking insane? <laughs> like, you just taught this kid, this two-year-old, how to sock people. <laughs> and now all this kid was doing was like, yeah, and just like swinging at people all day. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck are you thinking? Yeah. And then her parents didn't realize that either because they do that too because they're super Korean. Yeah. I'm like, look, this is what I'm talking about. You just think it's all fun and games, but they soak up everything and they don't necessarily understand what they're soaking up. Yeah, you know? now they're throwing up gang signs at three and <laughs> shit. What's up, cut? <laughs> Dude, I think... What, what it used to always trip me out. Like, I had a cousin, right? Mm. Uh, cousin grew up in a nicer area. But this dude, like, dad has, like, a full-time job, whatever. Mom, stay-at-home mom, church person, whatever. <laughs> and no matter how much you try to, like, protect a kid from whatever, you could do everything, right? This person was a, a clear example of it doesn't – sometimes it doesn't fucking matter. Because mm -hmm. this will end up doing a lot of stupid shit, sold a gun to a fucking minor. Oh, all, Lord. Uh, and, you know, when we had a conversation – like, I remember as we got older, I was like, what the fuck were you thinking? Mm -hmm. I'm like, you don't, you didn't have any access to this stuff. You had to hunt and search for this. Mm. Like, he had to go from where he lived to my neighborhood to yeah. start doing shit like this. I'm like, that's like a 40-minute drive, bro. Yeah, what for? I don't understand. Like, that's the thing that kind of, like I'm saying, you can't figure everything out. Because mm -hmm. if you look at it from a textbook, if somebody wrote, <laughs> wrote, down, wrote down how everybody was supposed to turn out to be, he wasn't supposed to turn out that way. Right, because he had his like nicer mm -hmm. area house. Little two-story home. Uh, fucking had, you know, hot pockets in the fridge. <laughs> it was super nice. Well, you know, I blame the parents. Because yeah. a kid is just looking for attention because maybe he wasn't getting love at home. So maybe he's looking to act out. Middle fucking child. Sorry, Q. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to start selling guns. Oh, no. He's going to sell guns to me. Um, He's a, he's a, he's going to be great. All no, right? no, Q's, Q's great. Q's going to be so great. Rick says he looks like Fat Joe. <laughs> <laughs> and he's not wrong so <laughs> um, alright we're gonna take a break we'll be right back have you ever been on the hunt for a new doctor and you ask literally <coughs> everyone you know for their recommendation and everyone's like I don't know. I just go to the clinic because I don't care about my health. Well, that's why we need ZocDoc because nobody knows anything, okay? Raise your hand if this sounds like you. You obsessively follow that super credible quote-unquote health expert on TikTok. Meanwhile, they're just a little dumbass kid from Oshkosh, Wisconsin, Googling things from some random website, and now you think you have cancer, okay? Well, if you think about it, it's time to head to ZocDoc, all right? There are thousands of top-rated doctors on ZocDoc. They're all listed with verified patient reviews, so you can find and book a doctor who not only has years of experience and an actual medical degree, but also gets you. ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top-rated patient-reviewed doctors and specialists. These docs all have verified reviews from actual real patients, not bots. And once you find the doctor you want, you can book them immediately with just a few app taps. No more waiting awkwardly on hold with a receptionist, okay? So, go to ZocDoc.com slash foods and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash foods. ZocDoc.com slash foods. So, um, yes, uh, you know, the babies, they have trouble expressing themselves 
and but Veda is speaking so you know how you always say Veda speaks like so well? Yeah. It's it's accelerated, bro. Uh-oh. Like she says things and I'm like, how did she put that sentence together, right? Uh for example, the other day, uh, I came up I came into the living room in the morning. Uh one of the iPads was dead, so I plugged it in to fix it or just to charge it up. She's like, Daddy, are you fixing my iPad? <laughs> Like she's a fucking AI robot. <laughs> That's like, actually a little scary. I'm it was, sorry. It was weird, man. Yeah. And and the iPad is down. For the first time ever. <laughs> <laughs> Systems are malfunctioning, Daddy. <laughs> it's, it's still Daddy. <laughs> it's not father. <laughs> she's super intelligent, but Dada. <laughs> father. You should probably check me for a poopy. <laughs> <laughs> Systems are calibrating. Papa. <laughs> Systems are calibrating. Uh-oh, poopy. <laughs> Where is my wawa? <laughs> uh, according to my calculations, it is milky time. <laughs> <laughs> but, so for the first time, you know, as I said, she's been kind of tra- uh, doing little tantrums. And for the first time ever, I called her a bad girl. Mm. And she did not know how to handle it, dog. She did something. I was like, Veda, this is this is a a bad girl thing. These are this is this is what bad girls do. And she went, No, I'm nice. Mm. I'm nice. I was like, Yeah, but I was like, Yeah, but you right now, you're bad. This is bad girl things. And she went, No. <laughs> she didn't know. She was like, What the fuck? You calling me? Me a <laughs> bad girl? Me? <laughs> Like super shy. Excuse me. <laughs> How dare you? Dada, I good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, 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 good. <laughs> good. <laughs> like the fucking bolts fly out. Fucking smoke. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. Um, and she she didn't know how to handle it. And then you know, conversely, um, she you know, like I said, we're potty training right now. So, um, remember I said Q really took to the sleep training quick. Veda took to the potty training quick as shit, dog. We were so worried. Did she enjoy it? Um, well, not as much as I enjoy pooping, but like I'm trying to teach her to um not feel like she has to just sit down and like force me, like just push it out. Mm-hmm. Cause like, you know, now that she's potty trained, um, and it's a trip the way we did it. There's a technique. Oh yeah. Can you I want to know how do you potty train a child? Okay, so there's different techniques, right? I also had no idea. Uh, Veda has been speaking to uh, like a, a, a potty training specialist, <laughs> um, which who gave us this method, where it's it's called just like the bottomless method, where you literally for like, and you have to, and it it it's it's it can get a little messy because there's gonna be some accidents as with any potty training situation, but what it is is for a few days, a week, whatever. You just have your child run around, no pants, no undies. And the thought process is that if they're like peeing on themselves, they don't like that. Yeah, Yeah, it's uncomfortable. It's gross. So they're going to be more likely to run to the toilet or where you tell them to pee, right? And by golly, it it worked. worked. Um, So, you know, she had a couple little accidents. Um, And she hated the feeling. And she just, yeah, she'd be like, dad, you know, she's like, dad, dad, dad I, I pee, I peed. But so now when she, she'll be chilling and she'll go, I had to pee, I had to pee. And then she Get runs, the fuck out of my way. <laughs> yeah, she runs to her little <laughs> toilet and she had a couple of accidents here and there. She has had a couple poopy accidents, but like, yeah, you just fucking, um, you just let them run around bottomless and you have to be just very attentive. It's like instinctual. They just know, it's like, yeah. I don't like poop and pee on me. So I got to go somewhere. Yeah. I think it might be a little different with Q because, you know, we got dicks, bro. So it's not like we pee ourselves and oh, get on our yeah, legs, yeah. you know, it goes He's everywhere like, else. I'm fine with this. <laughs> He's like, okay, uh, I had an accident and it's on you. So <laughs> what the fuck? What's, what's the problem? <laughs> yeah. What's that got to do with me? Yeah. <laughs> she starts peeing in fucking plants. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> or he pees on Veda. <laughs> what, dude? Veda, open your hand. Why? Gift. <laughs> it's a gift. But yeah, man, she loves it. Oh, and it's funny because like the other day, she's like, she's like, I have to poo. So when I'm like, when she's at, she has to poo, I'm like, I'm ready to snatch her up, run to the bathroom with her. And she stopped. And I was like, I thought you had to poo. She's like, it's just farts. <laughs> I'm like, oh, cool. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a fart. Got you. But yeah, man, she sat down, shit it. Um, you know, flushed her little, like, our, we bought her a little fake one that makes a fake flushy noise, a little, mm-hmm. little toilet, and then she threw everything away. I was like, Veda, good job, baby. You pooped and you flushed, you washed your hands. She's like, 
Daddy proud. I was like, I'm so proud. She, mm. I was I was like, like, she, oh. She's a verbal affirmation child, like a motherfucker. Dude. I, I guess so. That's fucking crazy. I don't do verbal affirmation very well. Whether somebody <laughs> says I did a good job or a bad job, it means fuck all else to me. It's really? Like, yeah, I don't care. Oh, I need that shit. Oh, yeah. Chia told me you're a verbal affirmation like a motherfucker. Yeah. Gas me the fuck up. Tell me I did good. <laughs> Look at the single dish that I washed and say, thank you, babe. I, I appreciate that. I can't wait to that. go pee later. <laughs> I'm going to be outside. I'm so proud of you. And you yes. <laughs> Yeah, I need to know that it's appreciated, you know? Yeah, Mariel never understood that. She goes, you really don't care. Like, somebody would be like, dude, you did amazing. I'm like, it's cool, right? Mm -hmm. They're like, that shit sucked. I'm like, all right. Because <laughs> I, the, the positive side to that is that I only need to like it. The rest of the world can hate it. It's going to you know, feel a little funky, mm -hmm. but if I liked it, it always comes up on top first, mm -hmm. and it doesn't bother me. That's why I've never really taken down videos, even if it did bad. Mm. It's like, I thought it was cool, mm -hmm. so I'm fine with it. I moved on. Uh, but like, definitely, I think most people don't live in that world, and I know only like a couple of other people that are like that. The small handful. <clears throat> that don't need it. That don't need it. It's all. It's about like in, like internal validation to the fucking max. The only problem with that is that sometimes you don't read other people very well, and you expect other people to be like that too. But most people aren't. You know. Yeah, and I feel like you know it also might be um, a part of the reason why I just um, when someone doesn't like me bothers me. Mm -hmm. Like not that I care about being friends, but if someone if I feel like someone has like dislikes me and I don't understand why I'm like this doesn't make sense why could you <laughs> why would you possibly not like me give me <laughs> give me a good give me give me can you come here for a second <laughs> can you come here for a second why you don't like me <laughs> come again say it again well, why you don't like me <laughs> well, why you don't like me <laughs> I don't get it <laughs> <laughs> just tap their shoulder. Give me. <laughs> so, you know. It, it just, can I have a hug? <laughs> can you, What's wrong with this guy? Give me a hug. <laughs> yeah, I, why you don't like me? Like, I just, I don't get it. And I'm like, I'm like, and, it, and it's like, wow, this, really? Uh, you know, it, it, it bugs me. Hey, but. when people don't like me, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> I'm more surprised when people do like me. <laughs> like, you're a really cool guy. I'm like, what's wrong with you, dude? Fucking well, loser. You know what I sent you? I sent you that Aries thing the other day. Oh, God. And Aries <laughs> is not a nice person. They're a kind person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that is very, listen, if there was any horoscope that matched, I've heard so many Aries horoscope that I thought was absolute bullshit. Mm -hmm. That's the only one where I'm like, I can relate to that very I much. I read it and I was like, oh, shit. How cr how interesting, you mm -hmm. know? Because I'm like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that would be me. So I feel like that embodies who I am. Like mm. I am overall extremely respectful and kind, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't overtly have to be nice to you the way yeah. that you want me to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I always treat people with kindness and respect. Nobody has ever said otherwise, right? They're mm -hmm. just more like, oh, that guy was a dick to me. And I'm like, 100%, I fucking hate you. Like, <laughs> there's a re I did it on purpose. Yeah. You know, like, I want you to know I fucking dislike you. Mm -hmm. But if, if, if not, I don't think anybody has ever said, like, if I was kind, they were like, I don't like that guy. Right. It's just, but if I, if you did get a bad vibe from me, it's because I got a bad vibe from you and I just fucking reflected it back. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> pew, pew. <laughs> Hi. Pew, pew. Ooh. Oh, speaking of, man. So I went to this little shindig recently. Okay. Um, this is not the bachelor thing. This is something else. But uh, a, a dude came up to me mm -hmm. and he introduced, uh, introduced me, uh, introduced himself to me. Mm -hmm. And he says, oh, I know your friend. This person, right? Okay. Common ass fucking name. <laughs> like, I'm talking about, I know like 30 of these. I know your friend Ashley. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, he's like, oh, I, I'm I'm Ashley's boyfriend. I'm like, okay. uh, it's like, oh man, I, I wouldn't know. Like, he's like, Ashley, like Ashley's boyfriend. I'm like, I, I was like, brother, <laughs> there's so many Ashleys in this world. Yeah. I, I, I could open up my phone and I'll pop up like 30. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. There's like, oh, I thought you guys were really good friends. I'm like, which? Which person are you talking about? So irritating. So I was just like joking around with him, right? Well, this fucking guy tells his girlfriend, my friend, who I figured out who it was, yeah. that I was being a dick to him. And oh I'm like, my God. what the fuck are you talking about? I was like, well, now I fucking hate this guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I was like, so he came up to me expecting like, 
in my, what I'm assuming is like a spark, mm -hmm. you know, oh, you know, yeah. because we like the same, I'm, you know, we're going to connect. But oh, I'm, we fucked the same girl? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, we smell the same coochie? <laughs> Great, huh? But I'm like, dog, that was so fucking rude of you. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you expected a certain type of, you don't even know me, bro. Yeah. So like I told her, I was like, do you know what he did? She, I was like, he came up to me. She just told me your last, your first name, not even your last name. And right. he's upset at me that I didn't know who you were. She's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. God. She had apologized for him. I was like, yeah, tell him to stop being a fucking asshole. What an idiot. But then like, I think like what happens sometimes and what I'm figuring out is that people hear who I am like on these type of spaces. Mm. So they try to match like this high energy. Mm. And in person, I'm not really, yeah. you know, I'm more like it because I don't really know you like that. Same. So he's trying to act like Mr. Tough Guy. And I'm like, what are you being tough? I'm not a fucking fighter or anything. Like, what's wrong with you? That's the, that's the, the, the curse of when people think they know you, right? Because of this shit. But what they got to remember is... You don't know me like that. Yeah, 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 you know yeah, 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 yeah. You know me, but not like you that. You don't know me like that. For example, you know, me and Rick's early sketches, was a lot of racial humor. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, no. A lot of racial <laughs> jokes. And one time specifically, I, 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 I know I've told you this. Ah, oh, I forget. Anyways, we were at this, like, Asian event. And, you know, I used to take Rick. Like, I still take Rick with me all the time to different shit. Like, everyone, all the homies know Rick, right? And there was a girl, mind you, this is the first time ever meeting Rick, right? And she met Rick, and the first thing out of her mouth was like, was like, oh, yeah, well, to, you, you can tell me how the chicken is over there, right? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. She made a fucking fried chicken joke out of the blue. Like, literally out of nowhere. They weren't joking around. They, I don't even know if we were talking about food. She met, the, she met Rick and was just like, yeah, something, something. Yeah, something with the fried chicken. And then, um, and then what and, the and then fuck? Me and Rick's kind of like, yeah, okay, turn around. Rick was like, what the fuck? Yeah, what is that? Yeah, so annoying, right? Because people, you know, I guess she saw, <laughs> she sees all her sketches about, like, I don't know, like, fried chicken and all of our little, like, little fucking racial jokes we mm -hmm. make. And then she thinks that, like, Oh, this is what they do. Mm. But like, bitch, you don't know me like that. <laughs> yeah, 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 you yeah, know? yeah. Like, I, you know, I it think, wasn't even a good joke. <laughs> yeah, and also too, just common sense wise, in terms of not celebrity, right? Mm. You know, anybody who's listening to this, like, have you ever been in a situation where you have like a specific group of friends, and there's like that one periphery homie mm. comes in and starts kind of going in on people? Like, it's like you're not a part of this group, like. I've known, let's say, you like, I've known Peter for X amount of years, so mm -hmm. Peter knows things about me, which is why he talks to me that way. Mm -hmm. But then you come in and you're, like, trying to get in on this. It's like, we have a different relationship. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. It's like, if you want to be a part of this world, I'll allow you to, but get ready, you yeah. know? But yeah. it's just kind of, you know, just, like, Korean people call it dunchi. Like, you have to know how to work yourself in, like, certain social, social situations. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very important for, like, Interacting with human beings. Mm -hmm. Like I say, like if you're a person who feels like you're awkward, that's probably the, the piece that you're missing. It's mm. like, oh, I gotta know how to navigate <laughs> differently with different people. Yes. I'm so aware of that, dog. This is something very specific to me that bothers me. And I'm I'm I don't even know if other people even think about this. Like it really bugs me when let's say you and me are hanging out, right? And then <clears throat> we're hanging out with like three new people or maybe people that are my friends but not your friends, right? Um, and I hate when people bring up inside jokes around other people that don't know about the joke. I mm -hmm. feel like it's so rude. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, then you got to be like, that's uh, no, an inside joke. And then you got to tell the story and you got to go through get all this background. I'm like, fuck, why did you feel the need to do like read the room? Yeah, man. Oh, What's dude, the point? You just brought up this one memory. And actually, you, you know this because uh, you were there. OK, so this guy's a nice person. Right. So apparently, <laughs> that's such a funny way to start a story. <laughs> this guy, no, this guy's. Uh, Let me just say, first of all, uh, this guy's a nice person. <laughs> yeah, this guy is a very nice person. All right. Right. Very nice dude. But apparently, I met this dude multiple times. And I don't remember him. <laughs> all right. And he's somewhat uh, in a celebrity stage of his life. And I just don't care for it. Right. Because I don't remember you at all. Right. And so. I remember we were in a circle and we were talking and chatting and then Khalif was there as well. And then Khalif made this comment and he goes, 
<laughs> he goes, oh, we were just talking about you when you were younger. And I was just standing in the group. Mm. I wasn't talking. I don't know who he is. Mm. And then he looks over at me. He goes, you just said you don't remember me. And I'm like, I wasn't talking about, he was just saying in general, I don't know what the fuck, what are you talking about? Yeah. Right. And so afterwards, like I uh, DM the dude and I'm like, cause it, it was bothering me so much and I could have just let it go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, Hey man, uh, just to let you know when this <laughs> happened, I wasn't talking, I don't know who you are still. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, if I feel like because you're friends with them, I don't want you to feel a certain way. Mm. So I was like, if if I did something to offend you, because I genuinely felt bad because the way he responded sounded like he was hurt. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, I, so I was like, if it feels like I disrespected you, so I apologize. He's like, no, I just thought it was kind of like whack of you to say like, you were talking about me when I was younger when you said you don't <laughs> remember me. And I'm like, no, he said that we were talking. I just happened to be standing there. Yeah. Wait, like, I was there for this? Yes, you were. Wait, 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 wait. Who, who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Oh yeah. yeah. So I was like, and I was playing to him like, no, he just said that general thing and I was just standing there. Right. I still don't know who the fuck you are. Right. right but I'm right. being polite to you because it seems like you're good friends with them. Mm. That's all that it is. He was like, oh, okay, okay. I, I, I just thought it was kind of fake and corny. I was like, listen, <laughs> you don't I was like, you, and this is what I shouldn't have said though, right? Because he I think that fake and corny got on my nerves. Mm. And I was like, you wear three purses. <laughs> On, one on your chest and two in your armpits. I don't think you have a right to call anybody corny, LOL. And then he didn't respond back after. But Well, um, who are you to judge? And then he, and then he didn't follow me. Oh, for real? Yeah. Hilarious. But it was just kind of weird. Like, you, I don't, why do people be so mean? You you hurt his feelings. I said I just didn't know him. I can't say I can't say I know you if I don't know you because then I feel like I'm doing the Hollywood thing. Like, have you seen that episode of... You know, like uh, it kind of reminds me of uh, what you were talking about earlier uh, in Atlanta when mm -hmm. he went to the the uh, like the Spotify thing, mm. and then the two agents are talking, and he's like kind of standing there awkwardly, and he just kind of sinks away. Mm -hmm. That's what it kind of reminds me of, and I yeah. feel like if I lied, I would have been in that position to kind of like pretend to laugh like what's going on mm. when I could just say, "I'm sorry, I don't actually remember you." Yeah, right. Because obviously, you have to understand too in these situations. We never shared a meal together. We mm -hmm. never hung out together. Only time we met was at big events where we probably glanced at each other. And met so many people, too. Yeah, like, how is that? That's so unfair to me. I forget so many people, right? Oh. Like, so I started doing this at the Smoogee events now or when I'm on set for a new fucking, like, video or whatever. Um, and I'm meeting somebody. I'll dap them up and I go. Um, and if I, I read their, like, little, little eyeballs. And if I feel like they make the slightest eyeball move that says oh i've met you before i go wait have we met before and then they go and sometimes it's like oh yeah yeah we met at the blah 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 i didn't think you remember or sometimes it's oh mm, i don't think so i'm like oh okay just check in right so i'll always start with have we met before because i want to make sure that it's not somebody i forgot because i'd be forgetting everybody especially with our adhd ass yes like we don't remember shit like i don't remember fucking that was the hardest part um after we did gook right mm. i was introduced to every casting director possible in the city <laughs> yeah and i couldn't remember them to save my life mm -hmm. and then an acting buddy of mine was like you have to be very if you want to work here like you you're gonna have to try your best to remember them know what they do what they are so when you re but i'm like you don't understand like you may you may have met like a casting director once or twice in the last week i met like 60. dude like, and all white casting directors look the same and they talk the same they say the same thing yes and they all have the same facial <laughs> hair it's cr <laughs> it's crazy yeah it's so fucking hard and some of them take it really personally yeah. it's like dude i took time out of my day to meet up with you to give you opportunities i was like well so did 50 other people so I, it, it's just hard for me. How come I can't just audition? And then if you like me, you like me, right? <laughs> and then if we develop a relationship, it's great too. Because they always use the same phrase. It's like, oh, I love your stuff. I love what you did. Let's go get some lunch. I'm like, Ugh, I hate this phrase. <laughs> I hate this phrase. I love that phrase. Oh, God, Tim, you're one of them. You've already <laughs> been accepted into that group. <laughs> well, I love that phrase because I feel like, and this is how I, I, I live my life. Like even I might not be the best actor or the funniest or the tallest, but if you get me in the room with you, then you will love me. <laughs> I feel like 
you know, I interview that legendary (laughs) self-confidence. I feel like I interview well, you feel me? Or it's like, I can win you over. If you might, if you're iffy with me before lunch, after lunch, you're like, I want Tim, right? Where I always say, look, I might walk into the room and a girl's not going to be like, I want to fuck this dude. I want to fuck this little five four Asian, right? But if they talk to me next to the punch bowl or the chips for ten minutes, they're like, "I think I might fuck this dude." Well, I'm not that at all. <laughs> I leave a very bad first impression and I leave a very bad last impression. No, not in acting. Like in acting, it's always like people. I think people take risks on me, right? Yeah. Because most people in this entertainment space, they they play by rules, yeah. right? So. They, they know that when they go into an audition, they're in a space, it's like, I'm going to get my ass kissed. And they're not expecting it, but that's just what they're used to. Mm. For me, I don't give it not as a point of like, I'm not going to kiss your ass. I just, I'm just myself, mm-hmm. right? And it's actually worked in my favor a lot. Mm. So one of the things that happened when I was, um, when I was doing all the auditioning stuff, and this is like what before I you know, chilled off of acting, was that a um, few big ca- casting directors, they always send me auditions only because they remember me. And then when we met up, I asked, I was like, why? I was like, why do you? I was like, well, when you do a general meeting, it's like in general, like I've never seen somebody not care so much in my life. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean? Like you showed up in flip flops and a tank top, tank top. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. I'm like, what am I supposed to wear? They're like, well, traditionally people will dress their best because they want to be casted in certain things. She goes, right, right. you look like you just came from the gym. And I was like, I did. <laughs> This other person, this other casting director was like, I remembered you the most because you literally took the meeting, not even to ask. I you, I didn't get to ask you questions. You just kept asking me about my job. That's <laughs> like, I've never seen somebody so interested in what I what I did for a living. <laughs> but I just didn't know what the general meeting. And by the way, like nobody told me what a general meeting was. Yeah. So I'm just going out of my own curiosity. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. I brought my assistant at the time who wanted to be a casting director. I was yeah. like, can she ask you questions? <laughs> Our meeting was just her asking her questions about her job and I just left. What the fuck? But they remembered me. Yeah, and they're yeah. like, wow. And, and then another person I asked was like, <clears throat> well, how come, like, I'm not signed to an agency anymore. Why do you keep sending me auditions? I was like, well, I said, like, it was, she said something that was very, that kind of stuck with me, which was very kind. She goes, you just, you, you don't smell of desperation. Mm. Like, you look, like, I like you because when you came in, it was like, you either take it or leave it. And you're not begging for any parts. Mm. You're just confident in what you do mm. and I like that in actors mm. I'm like oh that shit damn you like made me tear up a little bit because it made you feel good right because yeah. like sometimes I feel like I don't know what I'm doing yeah and so I'm like oh maybe I am enough right it's just I just gotta wait for the right opportunity that's good man because then you don't end up in shitty movies like I've been you know what I'm saying <laughs> And on that note, <laughs> thank you for stream them now. <laughs> yeah, they're, no, <laughs> they're all on Tubi. <laughs> no, oh, look, speaking of Tubi, yo, look, you've seen those clips of Tubi movies, right? Just be compl- so shitty, like so stupid. Dog, there's one, the funniest fucking take. They couldn't even do a take two. This like <laughs> the security guard, he does something. He like runs to tell somebody something, and then and then he runs away, right, out of the shot. And they cut to a wide angle, and for some reason, he, like, trips and falls. Not part of the movie at all. <laughs> he <laughs> actually fell, and they left that shit. Doc, those two B movies, memes are the best, because there was one where they were uh, shooting around pillars like this. Yeah. And the captain just says, oh, we bending bullets now? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, like, this random, like... I don't know, like janitor that suddenly knows how to shoot a gun and curve it. Doc, I want to know. I talk to Rick all the time. I'm like, all right, after I make a real movie... Next bucket list shit. We can do it a Tubi. He's make us fucking one take everything Tubi movie. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to. That's what Will Ferrell did, did too. Like when they were asking him why he did a Lifetime movie, mm. he goes, "It's just a bucket list thing." <sighs> and it's not. It wasn't supposed to be funny, but it's Will Ferrell and also um, Bridesmaids. Mm. Uh, what's her name? The main, the lead in the Bridesmaids. You're talking about Kristen Wiig? Kristen, yeah, Kristen Wiig. So it was Kristen Wiig and Will Ferrell in a Lifetime movie that's serious. But Are you serious? Yes, it was his bucket and he knocked it off. Ooh. That, that's why he did the Mexican movie. Oh, I remember. Because he rem- just wanted to do something in Spanish. That shit's crazy. So he didn't care how bad it did. He just yeah. thought, this is just what I want. I'm at that point in my life. I'm going to do what I want. That's so funny. Um, all right, well. You're almost there. We'll get there eventually. 2B movie. That's That's the goal now. <laughs> All right, y'all. Thank you for watching Dudes Behind the Foods. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe. All that bullshit. I'm Tim Chantarong Sue. And I'm David So. Bye. Yo, it's the dudes behind the food. Dudes.